All right. What we're looking at today has to do with inscribed angles. So let's start off with a basic circle. There's our circle. And I'm going to start by marking off the central angle. So there it is right there. And to make this a little easier to see, um, let's take everybody and blow it up. I think it's already blown up, though. Let's double check. Hey, Max, can we cut out the side conversations now? Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. And we're going to be dealing with angle measures. So let's go ahead and identify those guys and then measure it. So from what we've been talking about, ABC represents a central angle. And we can also talk about the measure of arc AC. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to be the same as the corresponding central angle, right? So the measure of arc AC, this arc right here, is going to be 66 and change. Um, what I want to do, let me see if I can get rid of all these extra decimals. Kind of a pain. So let's measure angles in terms of the nearest unit. And let's remeasure that. So we're not working with such quite cumbersome decimals. There we go. Measure angle. There we go. 66 degrees. That's a little neater. So there's my central angle, the arc AC. Those are all going to be 66 degrees. Now, an inscribed angle, gentlemen, still has its endpoints on the circle. But the vertex, instead of being the center of the circle, is also on the circle. Woo. Boom. So let me slide this over so that you can see they're separate. And uh, let me take the central angle. I'm going to make that dashed so it's a little out of the way. Display line width dashed. There we go. So now the angle that I'm looking at here. That's the angle ADC. That's what's called an inscribed angle. So let's go ahead and measure that guy. And we're going to be comparing these measurements. So measure the angle. Boom. Huh. Well, that's weird. 33 degrees. All right, let me write down, remind you guys what the terms are again. This is the arc uh, measure of the arc or central angle. There we go. And then this is the inscribed angle. How are we doing so far with the vocab? What, co what questions can I answer about which is which? So the inscribed angle is that when it's the angle coming from the outer yeah, you can think of it that way. Yeah, it's the, the angle, you could think of it as at one point on the edge, and then it opens out and intersects the circle twice. The central angle starts at the center and goes out. Now here's what's kind of neat. If I take D and I move it, notice the affected change in the inscribed angle. What are you seeing, Jake? Jacob, what's happening as I change the inscribed angle? As I move D, how does the measure of ADC change? Yeah, exactly. Nothing happens. The inscribed angle is fixed at 33 degrees. No matter where I put D, it's always going to be 33 degrees. In fact, if I change the central angle, let's open it up to a nice, neat, even 100 degrees. <coughs> ADC changed to 50, and now it's locked in at 50, wherever I put it. Uh, can you explain what the secant line or whatever it is real quick? Um, a secant line, remember, is a line that crosses a circle twice. So if I were to talk about the line DC, that would be a secant line. Okay. Right now, DC, right there, is just a chord. So it's the chord DC. Oops, that worked out. That's, let me take C and give him a little nudge there. Yeah. So, like, what, 
what would be the example of it crossing it twice? Oh, uh, like if I had the line DC, that would be a secant line because it crosses the circle twice. But it's, it's only crossing it once, though. DC? No, crosses yeah. it twice. Once at D, once at C. Oh, okay. A tangent only crosses it once. And just since you're asking, I can go ahead. I'll throw a tangent off here on the side so you guys remember the vocab. So if I do that, I can tell it to construe. Uh, tangents are hard to construct. I'll do it later. The idea, though, guys, notice this relationship. If I take ABC and divide it by AD, C, I always get a half. And that's true no matter how I change the central angle. The relationship is this. Inscribed angles are always half of the corresponding central angle. What's up? Yeah, that's because it's a little rounding error. There we go. So 124 and 62, it's a relationship of a half. So the inscribed angle, that's this angle right here, is half the central angle. It's also half the measure of the arc. So arcs are determined by the corresponding central angle. Should we look at a quick problem like this? Yes. Oh, actually, here, before I do that, what would happen if I took a point A and dragged it down so that I had a perfectly straight line here for A, B, C? What would be the, the measure of the central angle if this is the diameter, not a central angle? 90. A, B, C? 180. 180. And then the inscribed angle would be 90. 90. Oops, go back. There we go. And that means what kind of triangle have I got right here now? Right triangle. Right triangle. So the Pythagorean theorem will get used in all kinds of problems. And that's, again, as I drag this point around, as I move D, I'm still fixed at that rule of the inscribed angle, the one that's here, is half the arc, and it's half the central angle. Okay.